Welcome back to part two of Organic Politics. Our conversation is about a completely new way of exchanging goods and services. It's really exciting. My name is Greeno Novakoski. I'm talking with William Spademan and John Good. Thank you for joining John us. John Root. John Root. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked a little bit before about how if we decide what we're going to put our money towards, our, our credit towards, we can have an amazing influence on our community. Our credits has the capacity, as you both say, to change everything. But how do I get started? How do I open an account? Ah, uh, now that is somewhat uh, involved. It's like opening a bank account, about that much uh, uh, data and that much work. Uh, it begins with, as we said, the invitation. You need to be invited by somebody. Now, if you don't know somebody that can invite you, or if you don't know who is involved so that they can invite you, you can go to rcredits.org. We're we'll gonna have and, to say that again before the show is over. Yes, rcredits.org, mm -hmm. and click on uh, a big red button there that says Request an Invitation. And uh, that will show your name to the current members so that somebody who knows you will know to send you an invitation. Once you receive an invitation, which you'll receive by email, it has a link that you click on and then it uh, sends you to a web page where you can put in your information. You put in your name and your contact information. Uh, we also, because of uh, IRS regulations and, uh, and so forth, we ask for your social security number, your date of birth, uh, what else do we ask for that uh, is unusual? Oh, you also have to upload a photo of yourself because you get a card, an R card, and it has to have a photo on it. Uh, okay. That's part of our security system, which okay. is uh, one of the many things that goes beyond the security of banks. Uh, having a photo ID combined with a, a credit card uh, makes it very secure. Nobody can steal it unless they look like you. Mm -hmm. and use it successfully. Mm -hmm. um, so you are going to put so then you, on a, you are going to give to rcredits.org after you've received an invitation some very important information. How good is the security in the site? Uh, in many ways we have emulated the security that banks use uh, but then we didn't feel as though that was sufficient, so we went several steps beyond it. For example, uh, all of the really crucial information on our site is triple encrypted with several different methods, uh, both uh, mode and type of encryption. Um, uh, we even there's some data that's encrypted a fourth time with a, a special password that's not accessible even on the server, which makes it practically impossible to steal the important data from our server. Because that is a concern of people, to open up a new account. They want to make sure that it's secure. Triple encrypted. That sounds yeah. good. And the communications, I mean, we use the standard communication system with a secure site, which uh, in, encrypts all information coming and going to the site, so nobody can intercept that uh, while you're communicating and opening your account. Um, so it takes about 15 minutes uh, on the website if you run straight through, um, but we encourage people to click on the links uh, along the way to to learn more about the system and and, uh, um, and really understand what it is that they're signing up for and, and what it's all about. Right, and of course the most important thing in signing up is the agreement. And it's a one-page agreement, but every phrase or every word in the agreement that isn't immediately clear has an explanation. So it's actually four pages. But you if can you click want, through you can to click an expanded through version. To an expanded version, exactly. Good. 
So <clears throat> if you want to know what we mean by credit, click on it. If you want to know what we mean by ethics, click on it. If you want to know, but you can read it through in one page. It's really important because the entire basis of creating a trusted community in which we really can create money and change everything. Um, is based on that agreement. We are making a contract with each other. And in our uh, American system, and actually in the entire Western world, contracts are pretty sacrosanct. They're always backed up. You know, if, we, if, if, if it's a genuinely freely entered into valid contract, it's solid. And that's our greatest protection, actually. Mm -hmm. So if you say, well, I didn't understand the agreement, right, then you're you know, it's a little bit wobbly. But if you do say, I do understand the agreement, that, which is basically to do the things that are necessary in order to make the system stronger and to make it work and to behave ethically and uh, participate in decision making, then we really will have the basis for coming back from being just consumers in the American economy to being citizens of our common good community. So this contract that I sign after I've filled out my form in the rcredits.org site, after I've been invited, I request an invitation and what if, uh, there may be the situation where nobody knows me, but... Um, we'll find the, you on social media. We'll, Guess we'll, what? There'll we'll be some get to, common Somebody friends. will get to know me. Yeah. Um, so, but the contract is is many layered it's not just i agreed to hold on to my card use my card what else is involved what else is in the contract that well, would attract people okay, to do for something example, as convenient as money we need a hundred percent participation in voting ah the only way to get a hundred percent participation in voting is to have a proxy whose vote will count for yours if you don't, for some reason, vote. So the agreement says, I will participate to the extent that my life circumstances allow. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not, you know, <laughs> we're not going to nail you. It says know? that in the contract. It says that in the contract, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And in the event that I don't participate, I understand that my proxy's vote will count for me. Now, there can be situations where you get into a little loop with the proxies, so you also appoint an alternate proxy. Now, <clears throat> this is for decisions in the R credit community. Yes. In the R credit community, yes. Which we haven't now, done yet. Now, here's okay. a really interesting thing. All the people who are chosen as proxies are people that the person who chose them trusts have similar values because that's what they're going to be doing. Their, their vote's going to count for them, right? If they don't vote themselves, right? So the people who are the proxies for the most people are trusted people. Mm -hmm. And that's quite objective. And there was no campaigning. And there was no nothing. Because you're sitting between yourself and that contract and the whole idea of our credits, and you're thinking, whose vote do I want to count for, me, for mine? And you pick someone. Do you have a list of who the other R credit yes. participants yes. Once are? Yes, it's a drop Once you've in. signed the agreement and uh, done a couple other steps, then you can see the list of all the members in your community to choose from for the proxy. So, mm -hmm. so that, and, and you just enter the name of the person you want as your proxy and see mm -hmm. if they're a, a member. And mm -hmm. if they're not, then you remember I'd better invite them. Mm -hmm. But now, mm -hmm. from the system's point of view, there's quite a few people choosing this person as their proxy. Who is chosen by the most people as their proxy? And second and third, let's say all the way to seven. Mm -hmm. Those seven people are trusted people by definition. We can ask them to take on a special role or a special responsibility within the R Credits community. Mm -hmm. We can ask them to formulate a ballot, for example. A ballot. We, a ballot, right. And the ballot, which you would then vote online, can't be uh, like the ballots that we're used to. It has to be much more capable of expressing the will of the community. Because In order to do what? What are, what, 
Can you give us some ideas? Because I know you are excited about this, <laughs> but we're speaking. But just to back up one step. Okay. Uh, yeah. What John is explaining is, is that um, the R credits project really has two sides. One is the economic side, mm -hmm. and one is the uh, community-based democracy side, economic democracy. And we've collected innovations uh, from many different places to put into the economic side and many different innovations that have come up over the last 20 years or so and combined those to make a really great proposal for a democratic system to make decisions about our local economy. Um, and this uh, transitive proxy system where uh, everybody chooses a couple ongoing proxies is part of that. Um, I've never heard of anything like that before. That's, that's very right. Interesting. Well, you've never heard of an no. awful lot of things no. that we're trying to do. This is, this is great. <laughs> There's hundreds of people who have been involved over 12 years in designing this. And, 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 and questions in, and, and... In a dozen different countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all over. Okay, so it happens in other parts of the world. No, we've, we've been designing it for 12 years. Okay. And people in these other parts of the world are waiting for us to finish vetting it and piloting it oh, and okay. developing it here before they use it. Are there are okay. people waiting in India Why don't they just start? South Africa and they're really, Jamaica. They're, they want us to get the bugs out? We're, we're not letting them yet. <laughs> oh, we're, we're not? We're making sure that the system is really sound and well tested before releasing it to a larger group. Uh, we, and we're very close since, yeah. you know, we've, we, as I say, we've just launched this second pilot in Ann Arbor. Um, but one piece that is still important to get right before we let it go beyond two or three communities mm -hmm. is the piece of how the communities interact. We want to make sure that's well tested as well. Okay. Right. So the last piece of this um, uh, democracy part, at least as far as voting is concerned, is that we're going to rank our choices. So choices we, for what? Ah, right. Okay, well, let's say that we've decided that the most important thing in our community is to support local organic. So we're going to drop incentives on everything else, and we're going to concentrate the incentives on wiping out the price differential between locally grown organic food and okay. supermarket food. Okay. So if you buy locally organic, let's... All of our members that's one go decision out to, we, we might make. But that's community. what you it's were a asking. Potential. A yeah. potential. Yeah. potential. Yeah. It's yeah. on the It's a you it's asked a for an idea. Good. So that's Keep just going. an idea. That, that you know, okay. Um, let's make sure that people do not have the excuse it costs too much mm -hmm. by wiping out the differential. Let's have people shop at the at the supermarkets and see what the basket is costs. Let's have them buy the same stuff at the uh, farmer's market or at the co-op or, or directly from the and farmer then, or directly from the farmer and let's wipe out the price differential so you can't say I can't buy local organic because it's too expensive we might as a community decide to do that so the way that you would see that on the ballot is uh, what should we prioritize? Mm -hmm. Shall we prioritize local organic food? Should we prioritize just locally made? Should we prioritize? And you get to rank them, yeah. each one of those choices. You get to say, I give this one an A, I give that one a B, I really don't like that one, that doesn't make any sense, I'm giving it a D, and this one's downright immoral, I'm, in, I'm vetoing it. So you have. Where do these ideas? Do our credit holders generate the ideas? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we have a meeting process also. So when we gather the people who want to come to, to a meeting, we are using a uh, system based on sociocracy. 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 Or dynamic governance. Okay. And the idea of sociocracy is that everybody in the circle is in the center of the circle, ongoing. So we always go around. Okay. And we always hear from everyone. And we develop proposals. And once we've developed a proposal, then <clears throat> we ask for consent. And we go around the circle and ask if everyone consents to it. It's very, very difficult to get consensus unless, and then it becomes easy, unless there is a method of evaluating the efficacy of the decision 
at a certain point in time. So that's always part of a proposal. Of how to go and see if it's working. That's right. So we might say, let's try this for a month, and then we'll evaluate it to see if it's really doing what we want it to. And now it's easy to agree, since it's only going to be for a month, and we get to find out whether it's really working. Some things take longer piece. than a month to work. Then let's, it's up to us what, the, what time frame to set for yeah, evaluation. Sure. So sure. if we agree that uh, something would take three months before we'd even have the beginnings of an idea if it's working, in our, in our Bene group on Wednesday evening, we are using um, a way of looking at our meeting based on the four directions, north, south, east, and west. And we decided to do it for six weeks. Every meeting, we're going to do the evaluation of the meeting according to the four directions. I don't need to go into it all, all exactly. And at the end of six weeks, we're going to evaluate <clears throat> how it was. And we're not going to question. We're not going to start the meeting. Do we really need to do that? No, we agreed we're going to do it for six weeks. You're and committed to a process for a yeah. period of time. And then we're going to evaluate it. And by doing that, we're, and we're going to say, is this been serving us? Do we want to continue doing it? And if we do, for how long? That creates a... Uh, the, the other little piece of this, because everybody gets to participate, and you can pass if you want. You don't have to. I mean, mm -hmm. we're not mm -hmm. totally putting you on the spot, mm -hmm. but we are pretty much. Mm -hmm. We want to know what you think. Mm -hmm. So a proposal ends up incorporating the ideas that everybody had. And it becomes very easy to consent to that. It becomes quite, um, quite exciting that we arrived at something that we can all say yes to. William, have, do you have similar experiences? Are you part of the, the, the Bene group is meeting in Brattleboro? The Bene group is meeting at 5 Grove Street in Brattleboro on Wednesday evenings at 6.30. 5 Grove Street in Brattleboro. So is that we do not have regular meetings in Greenfield yet. This is something that John is taking the lead on and pioneering in Vermont, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, I want to say, I want to make sure it's clear that uh, not everybody is, people are not required to come to meetings in order to I to was going to ask. Yeah. Uh, that's what the proxies are all about, is it's important to the system, to the health of the system, to the quality of our decisions, that there be a lot of people who are interested and actively participating, but um, but we don't expect everybody to, and the people that don't have energy for that or don't have time for it yeah. currently yeah, or ever... That, that's a very real issue for many people. Their proxy represents them, and if their proxy isn't participating either, that proxy, Has a proxy. votes for both of them. Yeah. I mean, they're the second person's proxy yeah. votes for yeah. all yeah. three people. Yeah, votes for all three people. And only yeah. if you get into a loop do you end up with your alternative proxy. Get into a loop. Well, let's say uh, you assign <laughs> John as your proxy, proxy. he chooses me <laughs> as his proxy, and I choose, choose you. you. And well, none of us problem. shows up. That's a problem. That, <laughs> that would a be problem. a problem, except that we, you know, with There's the soft, we, you have to choose an alternate proxy, okay. and the software good. makes good. sure that there are right. problems the, like that. So. Yeah. Right, and the likelihood that the alternative would also be in that loop could be high or low. So then we just say, hey, please choose another proxy. Exactly. This loop thing is going on. Not too far. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm, what I'm seeing is that it's, for, for me to feel really excited about this, let's take, just take a, a worst case scenario. I'm talking about who this group is that is making decisions about where to put credit, where to invest our credits, where to invest money. And like many people, I try to influence the world with where I shop, what I buy, where I contribute money to, if I have it, where I don't spend money. So everybody, whether they choose consciously or not, is influencing the planet with their monetary exchanges. But it seems to me that, worst case scenario, I'm the only woman in a group of men. Not likely to happen. Nothing against men, but that's not a diverse group. Invite your women friends. So it's it built into this whole thing is very important to you want a diverse group, invite people who aren't like yourself, which we don't do naturally. No, this is true. 
So that, yeah. that's a thought that comes to mind in terms of making it dynamic and balanced. And so we, not just a gang of, you know, your cronies. Right. Yeah. We're, we're up against that. I yeah. mean, we do not know really how to go about that, how to make sure that it's diverse. And the Bene group needs more diversity. We're all the same generation. The same, we all have true the, back, the other two communities as yeah, well. Yeah, we all have the same background. Yeah, but it's a problem that we believe is solvable. Yeah. If, right, and yeah. and it's just up to us all together to yeah. figure out how to do that. So, if this topic is interesting to you, and you don't look like me or them, please go to ourcredits.org and, and click on Request an Invitation, and we'll find somebody that knows you. Because we're all related. <laughs> That's right. And we really do know the, more. Okay, good, good. Um, that's not the end of our conversation, but I think that's important that because issues of power and economic disadvantage and advantage are related to diversity. Absolutely. Definitely. You know, if I was part of a group and I'm certainly thinking about this, thinking very positively about this. If I was part of a group, I would want, once we were strong and we had surplus, right, I would want to make some um, incentives towards contributing to the old, somehow contributing to keeping down um, the numbers of people that are sent to prison. Absolutely. Okay? We have a, a horrible situation yeah, of we'll a privatized prison, si prison <laughs> system and people in prison who have no bi pe business being in prison. Our, yeah. our societies and our cultures and our families are weakened by how many people are in prison. Absolutely. One of the members of the Bene group that meets on Wednesday evening at 6.30 in, at Grove Street uh, is working on restorative justice. Now, restorative justice has a tremendous potential to totally transform our way of thinking about criminality and criminals. And restorative justice creates the relationship between the victim and the community that allows the community to create the circumstances in which not just forgiveness, but uh, or restitution, but uh, reintegration yeah. can really happen. Yeah. Our our system wants to take the problem person, right, or the <clears throat> the perpetrator, <clears throat> out of circulation, and put them with all the others where they can learn how to be even worse than they were, <laughs> basically. You so mean the current. The, the current, system, the current right? system. So what we need to do is to create the conditions in which the person is held yeah. by the community and honored and helped to develop. And part of what we hope with our credits is that we will have this sort of conversation as a community as well as purely economic conversations and really make the world the best it can be for all of us. Yeah, the, the, the issue of homelessness comes for example, to mind. But uh, for this, this, um, this power of, of being able to make decisions and have money to fund our decisions is, we believe, what can bring people together to have talks about important issues like this and to feel empowered to do something about it. And not just feel empowered, but, but actually be, be empowered be to empowered. do something about you, it. You, I hope that uh, I hope that we can bring in a diverse economically um, collection of people, um, particularly because many many people in Brattleboro and elsewhere. Um, I don't live in Brattleboro, but I know a little bit about the situation. Hardly anybody votes in Brattleboro on issues related to the town. We are inactive in our democracy. Do you see our credits influencing people's 
feeling about whether or not their voices are heard? Yes. How um, do you see that? Well, as I say... Um, and we having, only have five minutes to discuss this important topic. Okay. <laughs> having money uh, to back whatever decisions we come up with um, and money that doesn't have strings on it like it does with towns and the sort of... Uh, um, not just strings, but restrictions on what we can spend our money on, to really be able to do whatever it is that we can envision and think is right, we believe that this will help people get more involved in democracy, and some of that will spill over into our larger society, and people will become more active in, in all of our democracies. Yeah, the, ex the excitement about being able to make decisions that affect our community is hopefully going to be really contagious. So when our credits has scale, and we actually have money, and we really know that we can create the money, and we won't just be making a little mess, right? Mm -hmm. Once we've got the scale, then the question is, what do we value? What do we want to see happen? Is there somebody who would really like to do that? Are they capable of doing that? Is it a good use of the resources? And if we agree that it's, we value it, there's somebody who really wants to do it, they know how to do it, they have the skills to do it, it's a good use of the resources, guess what? We are not going to ask, where are we going to get the money? Because We, have we are it. not going to ask that. We are going to create the money so that they can do what we value. That's a really good stopping place, I think. Please go to the rcredits.org site, find out more, join us, be a part of this. Let's create a new world with your capital. Thank you so much for being part of Organic Politics today. Again, thank you to William Spademan and John Root. My thank name you, is Greeno Novakoski. Goodbye. Thank you, Greeno. Thank you. Do, 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 do,